Warning. This product may cause increased altitudes, more airtime, more cross-country miles, jaw-dropping awesomeness, record-breaking flights, competition trophies, thoughts of world domination, and a large permanent grin. Use at your own risk. This is the pre-flight briefing for Practical Exercise 10, Thermal Centering 3. The purpose of this exercise is to practice the easy as 1, 2, 3 thermaling method, modified slightly as needed for a different type of thermal, one with a stationary source. All earlier exercises involving thermals in wind use drifting source thermals, which are more or less vertical columns that drift with the wind. Stationary source thermals, however, stay in one place and are quite leaned with the wind. Check out this 27-minute sequence of images from Condor showing one stationary source thermal and several drifting source thermals. Here's a flight track playback of a successful attempt of this exercise. In a stationary source thermal, you must make more frequent adjustments to your circle in order to stay centered. And when you reach the top of a stationary source thermal, to hold your altitude, you must circle a fixed point on the ground, which means making a fairly large upwind adjustment on every circle. The slower flying the glider, by the way, the longer the duration of this adjustment. Continue using the same bank angle and airspeed while circling and with one exception, continue strictly following the easy as one, two, three thermaling method. The exception is that sometimes you'll need to make an adjustment even when you made an adjustment in your previous circle. You'll definitely need to do this after reaching the top of the thermal. If you keep making adjustments in a particular direction in every circle, but the need to move your circle in that direction just continues to grow, then make larger adjustments. Once you're at the top of the thermal, the needed adjustment direction will be pretty close to straight up wind. Don't bother trying too hard though to figure out the exact wind direction. Just monitor the lift strength around your circle and move toward the strongest lift side of your circle. This approach works regardless of the wind direction and will also help you stay better centered in the crosswind direction. It will be more difficult in this thermal than in previous exercises to stay centered once you get centered so like in the previous exercise, you'll never deliberately leave the thermal except to exit the flight. You'll use thermal helpers to find the thermal, but will turn thermal helpers off once you start circling. To pass this exercise, you must reach a certain altitude by a certain time, must not lose more than 200 feet of altitude in the 9 or 10 circles after reaching the target altitude, and must not turn thermal helpers back on after entering the thermal. Because this thermal is so leaned and you'll be approaching it from upwind, you'll probably be able to see more than one bubble when it's time to turn. So instead of waiting till you can only see one bubble, like in earlier exercises, turn as soon as the nearest bubble fills most of the screen. And remember to trim to 100% as you enter the thermal. This concludes the pre-flight briefing for Practical Exercise 10, Thermal Centering 3. Relax, have fun and good luck.